Right, the fuse board is, is, is going in a different place to where it currently is at the moment. At the moment, at the property, the fuse board is it's up at high level. I've got a little sketch here that kind of shows what we've got. So this is, you know, roughly what we've got at the moment. I'll also put a picture up showing a photo of it so you've got a, a better idea of what, we, what I mean. But this is floor, ceiling, the existing fuse board is up here. There's a little bit of plastic trunking and some tails that come up to it. And I'm bringing the new fuse board down and to the left so that it's not at ceiling height. It's gonna make it more accessible. The breakers, I'm trying to get them so they're about 1350 from floor level. So it's more in compliance with part M of the building regs. So I've got a, I'm gonna change this existing fuse board to a big junction box. I'm gonna drop some steel trunking down the wall Come, it's going to come down and along across the top of my new board. I'm going to join it with some galve couplers and, and bushes. And then I'm going to pre-wire this board up to the, the junction box. The junction box will have some dim rail inside it. So I'm going to get that pre-wired in my garage today so that when I go to site to do the job, all I've got to do is take the existing board down lift it off the wall, put this new like assembly up that I'm about to make and do my connections in there, which should cut down on time on site and, and make it for an overall all quicker job. Okay, so I'm gonna build, build this board up first. So I've got a piece of slotted dim rail that's going to go in there. So we want this to be 380. Square. I love these squares. Most people have a combination of square. These, these are brilliant. They're little Japanese squares. I don't know if they're from Japan, but I'll call them a Japanese square. So they've got little bits of Japanese writing on them. I'll get them, I've got it for maximum the tools. They're absolutely brilliant. Really compact. Never go, because it hasn't got a sliding bevel, it never goes out of, out of a square. You always get a perfect 45 and a perfect 90 degrees. I love them. Right, let's, uh... Entry into the bottom of this. 
so we get the center, so it's 400, so 200 to the center. So if we was to come up, yeah, like that. Okay. So that's where I want my hole for the bush to go through. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, go and get myself my hole saw that fits it, and then we'll uh, we'll get that drilled. Okay. Now. I was going to put a bush in here, but it turns out my 51mm hole saw is on site and I haven't got another one here. So what I'm going to do is put, I'm going to drill a bigger hole. I don't have a bush that fits it, but I have got some grommet strip on the van. It's not, it's not what I generally want to use, but ultimately it will do the job. It's what I've got. Uh, and I've got to work what I've got, so we're gonna we're gonna do it this way instead. That's come through fine. I'll give that a little file up now and uh, sleeve it off. This is grommet strip, you've probably seen it before. It's like a little plastic, well, it's, it's grommet on a roll basically. And you uh, you can tuck it into the hole. I don't know if you can see it too well, but uh, we get the joint at the back. And that goes in like that. You want to push it on really tight. Force it on because you want it to stay in there really tightly. That's the same as a brass bush. The only good thing about a brass bush and a lock ring is it can never come out again unless it's undone. With grommet strip, you haven't got to be really careful, but this can pull off if you're pulling cables through forcibly. And, uh, and then it's really difficult to get back on again, but in, on this job, this will be fine. So when bringing these in, I want to look really at where cables are going to go now. That one there is a good one to use because you know that is in line with where some of the breakers go. It's not much point in me knocking that one out when I look back at it now because that's just in line with the main switch. It's not really going to help matters. So I'm going to want that one out. Now let's line up some couplers on this. So that one, what's it? Right there. 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 20 mil holes at the moment, so I need to make them bigger. What I'll do, if I leave this little plate in here that's already there, like the little blank, and carefully drill down into it, I should then be able to enlarge that there without having to uh, mess around using two hole saws. Let's try it on one. 
sometimes these are quite weak and you can't start drilling on them, but we'll see how we go with it. Let's put it on this one. Come back to that in a minute. We're not going to need that for a bit. More cleaning up again. Six hundred. Because uh, I've got to, I've got to fix this trunking to the underside of the joint box. So I think I'm going to try and make. I haven't bought any flanges with this, and it's a Saturday, and I'm not going to be able to get any. So I think I'm going to recut the vertical bit again, and just create some. What should we go with them flanges? Maybe 35 mil. And that should give me something. Yeah, we're going to do that. So. So, what I'm going to do. So what I'm looking to do is to open the ends of this out so that when my box goes against it, I can drill up and fix in. So I'm going to remove this bit of metal work here, these bits here, and then I should be able to bend them open and backwards. So let's see. on. 
of that timber is on the line that I want to crease it on. So I should now, with a hammer, be able to tap that around. of sharp edges and that's good so I need to cut this to length again yeah these two bits made so that's our vertical drop that's got the flange I've made at the top which will allow me to fix it to the, the board and our horizontal bit to go across the top of the trunking so I've got this laid out on the deck now so this is what it's what it's going to end up looking like so we're going to have our junction box there trunking out the bottom I'm going to drill two fixings either side there to mount that to the bottom of the box. We're going to come down into our elbow along on our five 32mm couplers. The cables are come through and into the board. I'm not going to do the knockout yet for the tails coming in, so I'm not sure whether I'm going to bring it into the bottom or whether I'm going to bring it into the side. I'm still undecided on that, but that's going to be... I'm going to work that out on site. My main thing is that I can build this now, pre-wire it, and carry it to the site in one piece. And when I get there, just screw it to the wall. Right, so <coughs> you'll obviously know if you've worked with metal trunking before, but it's not like plastic trunking where you just butter fitting up to it or miter it. The ends generally need to be drilled if, you, if, if, if you're not working with one of the pre-made ends. Now this is, We get that butted up to there and then we can mark our fixing hole there and on that one there so we've got that to drill and I'm gonna label that that's our 90 degree bend that end Okay. 
Okay, so I've got them stuck. What I also need to do is put my holes in in this piece here. I won't, I'm just, just going to have two there on that side. And I'm going to have two on that side there. And also, while we're out, we might as well do our fixing holes. So we've one there and one there. Hopefully when I come to mount this on the wall where I've done my fixing holes doesn't just line up with you know the edge of a brick course or, or something like that but I won't know until I get there. So that's our, our trunk you made up. That's gonna live like that. So the next thing to do is to get our, our board up. Now, I'm actually gonna put another 32 mil hole in there, cause that will be a nice spot at the end to bring my two 10 mil through they'll be pretty much in line where they've got to go then. So I'm going to get another one of them drilled out quickly. So I'm going to do that there. slightly so on the board to end there or do I does it really matter they put no it doesn't matter I'm gonna end it there a little overhang doesn't look too bad but I need to now mark all of them under there and then I can drill my holes in the trusket this is what is nice about making this up on a on a flat board once I you know if I mark these up it's all going to align nicely when it's on the wall as well. So we've got you, 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 you,
got me bits from R and B style. They're local to me, and one of the one of the few supplies that I use. They're really good for metal work, so check them out if you're in May State. Right, we're going to get these. I'll tell you what, actually. I'm going to loosely. I'm going to loosely fix them. So that's that uh, built and assembled. So all I've now got to do is fix that to the underside of that joint box. And that's all my, my metal work done then, which is nice. I'll then mount all my div mount connectors in there. Now, I'm not gonna drill the top of that board out at the moment because uh, until I get the old one off, I'm not really sure where the cables are gonna come into it. Obviously gonna come in at the top. I'm not 100% certain, so I'm not going to pre-drill that because that's just going to be that's going to be something that will probably end up being wrong. But uh, but no, this this is all nice now. So that's the board made up now. Get the daylight out here. So we've got a junction box at the top. It's bolted to the bottom of that. That little bit of lid's on there, but we've got a little bit of lid to cut for the bottom section. And that is in ready to go. So what I'm gonna do next is get the dim rail connectors mounted in there. Get all my RCBOs into the board and then start uh, running my cables up to the top of the joint box. Right, I'm gonna start getting these uh, RCBOs put away in the board now. I'll get them all, all in, get the neutral fly leads in, and then look at getting the single cores up to the junction box.
Now, I just spoke about boot laces. With this finely stranded cable, if I was to cut these back, I'd have to put what's called a boot lace ferrule on them. It's a little metal sleeve that gets crimped over it and it prevents the screw terminals damaging the cables too much. But they come, can we see that? These come with the ends pressed in a way that kind of does the, the same job as a boot lace ferrule. So by keeping them the length they are, I don't have to do anything for that. And the other thing about keeping them the length they are, if they'd ever got to be moved in the board, or so I get to the job and find out one of these is the wrong size, you know, I can take the RCBO back out and it's perfectly usable again without having to worry about whether the neutral towel is actually going to reach the terminal on a different board if I have to use it somewhere else. I think what I'll do, I'll just go and get a, uh, can you, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to go and get a, a couple of stick-on cable tie bases, one there, one there, just to pin them in place, and then that, that I'm quite happy with. Okay, so this is, this is where we're at so far. So board is in, RCBOs are all in, trunking's in, all the, uh, the DIN rail connectors are now in. So my next job is just to, just to start running the singles in to where they've got to go. I might get this bit of lid cut first and then I can put all my cutting tools away because they'll be done with, which is nice. But yeah, that's been quite a nice morning's work.